study local history. By learning about Manchester's past, we gain a better understanding of regional and national history. For example, Cheney Silk Mills, Hilliard Woolen Mills, and other manufacturers made the town blossom during the Industrial Revolution in a pattern seen throughout New England and the United States. By studying the rise and fall of our mills, we learn about business cycles, employment practices, inventions and patents, tariffs, fabrics, and so on. Knowing more about our history increases our understanding and enjoyment of our town and our sense of community pride. We can learn from books, but we can learn about local history firsthand. Perhaps you know the name Cheney Technical School. And you might be interested in hearing more about the man who lent his name to the school. The school was named for Howell Cheney, 1870 to 1957, who took a great interest in education, particularly technical and vocational education for both boys and girls. Howell Cheney graduated from Yale in 1892 and went into the family business, manufacturing silk at Cheney Mills. The family started the industry in 1838 in a small wooden mill at Hot Brook at the site of the current I-384. After failure and challenge in the early years, the silk mills were a phenomenal success between 1890 and 1923, employing 25% of the town's population. The Cheneys built schools, reservoirs, firehouses, and utility companies for the townspeople, and they were the town's largest taxpayer. Howell Cheney worked at the mills from 1893 to 1935, including several years at the Morgan Street Hartford Mill, of which he was superintendent beginning at the youthful age of 28. He served as director and secretary from 1925 to 1935. He was a trustee of Manchester Savings Bank, a member of the Manchester Board of Education, and he served on the boards of many civic and educational organizations. He lived with his family on Forest Street, within walking distance of the mills. In a 1910 speech, The Vocational Needs of Our Schools, he said that academic schools were hidebound by tradition and believed that technical schools could be more innovative and meet the needs of children who weren't interested in what he called culture studies, presumably Latin and Greek, which would not help them much in the workplace. 1913 Hartford Current articles announcing his election to head the Yale Corporation said, He is actively engaged in the great Cheney Brothers Corporation, but has given much time to educational and social studies. He is a member of the Connecticut State Board of Education and is widely known as a man of high character and marked ability. He is a practical manufacturer and a first-class businessman of broad views. Today, viewers will have the opportunity to look at the house that Howell Cheney lived in near the Great Lawn in Manchester, Connecticut. Welcome to a presentation by the Manchester Historical Society. Today is September 27, 2006, and we've just come up the curving driveway to this beautiful Cheney mansion, lovingly restored by Jerry Krause. Thanks for letting us come to visit today, You're Jerry. You're quite welcome, Susan. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you here. And tell us about, it's a 1901 mansion, you said, but it had yeah. additions <clears throat> even way back when. It had two additions. Um, this addition was added in 1917, and the other end of the house, that whole the whole wing on that end was added um, before, between 1901 and 1917. And um, some of the electrical work and the, and the, and the um, patent pending dates on the electrical fixture go back to 1907 or 8, mm -hmm. so it's hard to tell. And, and the, uh, the joists in the basement are plain instead of rough sawn wood, so you can see, you know, inherent differences in the way the house was, was built. Um, the only matching feature was the brick. They did a beautiful job between the two wings, and if I hadn't told you, you would never guess by looking. <laughs> but this wing was added um, in 1917, um, and, and the reason I know that is because the porch uh, was built along with this, and years ago uh, there was a lot of rot on the roof, and I ripped it all off and opened it up, and inside was um, uh, a board that the builder had made a note, and he dated it September of 1917, 
and uh, you said um, the war with Germany still in progress after so many years of fighting. The drafted men leave this week, um, and it was signed. Uh, Guy Peck wages five ninety five, but it doesn't say whether that was a day or an hour or a week. <laughs> So we know that that was the date that, that the workmen were putting this together. And uh, the board that he signed was one of the roof boards of the porch, uh, the beaded, uh, beaded tongue and roof board, which I still have, by the way, in the house. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, we can take a look at that. So, so that, that kind of dates this end of the, of the house. And now we're talking about dates. Uh, it was originally the Howell Cheney family that lived here? Yes. Yeah. Howell Cheney uh, was big on education and uh, he was born. 1870-71. I think he was a twin, um, and I think his brother died early. And um, at any rate, he built this um, about uh, along the times of most of these homes were built from between 1895 and the early 1900s. Um, One of the cool things about this particular house is the spires. Yeah, they all have. Uh, there's a half a dozen of them, along with five chimneys and and, and 13. Um, flues for the chimneys and the furnaces and the like. But the spire is um, unique to the design of the house. And and uh, the only time it looks spooky is in cold weather, rainy weather when you look up. Uh, it gives a, a more haunting look in overcast weather. Uh -huh. But it is a, it is unique. And they're quite large. As a matter of fact, I was up on the roof a while back and and uh, from here they look like they're only two or three feet. But in yeah. fact, in fact, they're, they're probably six, seven feet high. They're oh. quite large. Uh -huh. yeah. <clears throat> After the Cheneys left here in the 1950s, wasn't it? In the mid-50s, Howell Cheney left, yeah, and the house was sold um, to uh, the Quishes. Mm -hmm. um, they lived here for up until the early 60s, 62, 3 or so, and then the house was sold uh, to, to uh, Monsignor at St. James Church. And of course, during that period of time, it was vacant for about five years, and unfortunately, they didn't have the money to repair it or to, he wanted to make a um, rectory out of it. Um, but because it was vacant, kids vandalized the home, mm -hmm. broke all the windows in the house. Mm -hmm. um, it was all boarded up. Uh, pipes froze, um, water leaked, loosened a lot of the plaster in the first, second floor, fell down. Um, there was some fire damage from kids playing in there at night and lighting little fires on the floor, mm -hmm. which all had to be repaired. Um, but then the house was sold in the late 60s, and um, and then they started to repair and bring current some of the uh, particulars of the house, like the heating system was all modernized, um, and there was some insulating. Um, they repaired a lot of the plaster. Um, all the plumbing was replaced, all copper. They took out the original pipes, and so there was a lot of money that was spent to bring at least the basic particulars uh, up to a more current code. Mm -hmm. um, but not much had been done after that. And then that person had the house until I bought it, 1975. Now I'm amazed that you were working in Detroit and you, you started working at Patent Whitney and sort of commuted there. How right. did it happen that you bought a terribly run down House. Well, I, I commuted for a year, and I and I, I met a realtor who was my age, and we kind of um, became social friends even after we bought the house. He knew, he knew that I was a do-it-yourself sort of a guy, and um, so we spent a year looking because I commuted to Detroit for such a long time every other weekend. So we spent a lot of time hunting, and by the time I sold my house after a year, this house had just come on the market. And uh, the first day that we were here, as a matter of fact, there were vines all over the back. The house was still in disrepair. The yard was terrible. Um, it was an overcast day. It was raining. And it was even spooky looking <laughs> because it was so bad. But uh, it was my calling. I know I, you know, I saw it. And, and the house basically, structurally, the house was just in great shape. You know, you look at, you look past the, you know, a leaky gutter and a leaky window and things like that and see that the house proper was just as solid as a rock. And what it needed was a lot of updating and repair and replacement of missing parts and things of that nature. So we've been doing that for 30 years. And um, and it's close to uh, close to done. <laughs> it's, like woman's, it's like woman's work, you know, it's never done. Uh -huh. But over the years, I, I, I worked um, probably 40 hours a week at uh, my employment and another 40 hours a week here. So 
there's probably not probably there is over thirty thousand hours of work um, you know there's just there's just so much that that has been done over the years it just would take hours to describe I mean missing moldings and uh, everywhere even even in this area you know the roof here had leaked over the years and all the moldings on the top were missing or they were missing and rotted and so when they, you take all that apart you rebuild all the roof put all the wood back and then you can no longer match the moldings you can't buy them anymore mm -hmm. so i have to remanufacture all those i'm a woodworker so it takes a lot of time and throughout the inside and the outside of the house a lot of woodwork has been replaced and uh to match the original and you would never know if i didn't show you what was uh -huh. old and what was new it looks like it's but, copper fat on top of the brickwork on top yeah, of the wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, there's copper. There, there's copper in a few places. Um, there's a hatchway right here. You just swing around and take a look at it. This, for example. Oh my goodness! Um, that's a huge hatchway. It's a, a basement hatchway, and when and when we moved in, it was all rotted. Um, it was it was covered with what they call turn metal. It's really, it's a, it's a zinc coated steel. But over the years, it had rotted out, rotted the wood. So I ripped it all off, replaced the under, uh, the wood underneath it, um, and then I put copper on it. Um, and I did that about 1980. And when I did it, I did a little research on it, how to, how to get it turned green, to get that patina. And um, so the books that I had said it takes 25 years. Without chemical treatment, it takes 25 years. Well, that was 1980, 81. And 26 years ago, and it is only in the last couple of years, last five years now. It's not quite. There's a few places where it's got a little more color to go, but now it matches the original copper that are located in other parts of the house. So, in addition to knowing all the different trades, you have patience. Yeah, and lots. <laughs> got to have lots of time. <laughs> uh, were you interested in the Cheney's lifestyle, or um, as far as? how they lived in the house? Well, it's fascinating, yeah, we are. Um, we haven't done a lot of research on it, but we've, we've, we've got the books and their family trees that go back to 1635, and, and uh, it's interesting to, to um, see who begot who and who to follow the tree down and to see all the names and places of people. It's quite fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, well, and another interesting aspect is uh, your garage here that you were mentioning, because they didn't, well, the Teenies didn't have garages, didn't need them, just well, called the chauffeur they, to come over. Well, they did have garages. There's a dozen of them down at the end of the, of the property. And then um, not next to the house. Yeah, there's none next to the house. So I built this 25 years ago, and um, uh, I just wanted a garage so I wouldn't have my cars filled with snow and everything else and bad weather. But right now, it's the only uh, mansion up here that has a garage. Nice job and, uh, matching the colors too. Yeah, yeah, that was um, a long time coming. We had it. We, did, we we painted it a few times to try to um, where we change colors. Even on the house, we changed colors several times. Oh. And um, actually, this selection of house came from the colors came from um, uh, Old Town, Alexandria, Virginia. Oh. Uh, when I traveled a lot during work, I saw a home with this color uh, uh, paint on it. And, uh, and the brick was, was exact, so I, I took some samples of the brick on this house the next time I went to Virginia, and I held it up to the house, it was a perfect match. Wow. And the color looks, looks so good, so that's how we ended up with this color, and of course when I built the garage, we just matched it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So detective work, we're gonna have to add detective work to sure. skills. Sure, sure. Can we walk around the house then next? Yes. Okay. Yeah, sure. And this is the patio that you put in? Yeah, this was, uh, this was done uh, about the time I built the garage, 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, all of this stonework came from uh, uh, a quarry about five miles up the street. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's, all, it's called mica schist, uh -huh. uh, the stonework. And um, so it's held up well. But the good thing about stonework, it doesn't take any maintenance. Uh -huh. Now, um, uh, Vivian Ferguson, your neighbor and also the town historian, mentioned that the entire yard was terribly overgrown. Oh, yeah. There were, matter of fact, I'll point out on the other side of the house, um, there were trees that were growing right out, right out of the, um, they looked like they came out of the basement, but there were they, seedlings that came up and these trees were as high as the house and they're, they're rubbing the brick all the way up, evergreens, and so it had never been maintained and allowed to overgrow. So we had to take a lot of that stuff down. Um, and then in the last seven or eight years, 
on the property, we removed over a hundred hemlock trees oh. because they've all uh, succumbed to the uh, woolly delgate. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so as a result, out in the front area, we replanted about 75 evergreens. We mm. put in Douglas firs and arborvitaes and eastern white pines and um, a few other brands. But now, in the last seven or eight years, it's starting to um, mm. grow up and give us the seclusion and privacy that we had before we tore all the hemlock trees down. Mm. Mm. Now, explain to me again which part is the addition. Yeah, th this this wing here was added, uh -huh. and and this wood wall was added because there's hallways behind it which connected the um, original part of the house to the to the new wing. Uh -huh. um, and then when they did that, they also added uh, a little more room up to the third floor. Mm -hmm. That spiral staircase, is that original? No, no, no I put that in um, about 15 years ago. Is that a mother-in-law uh, suite? Yes, or, yeah. exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right now it's vacant. Uh -huh. um, but uh, it, it, it was redone originally for my youngest son. Um, they lived up there for several years when they got married so that they could uh, save money buy a house. Mm -hmm. They're now long gone. Uh -huh. <laughs> this looks like an icebox so, door. Yes, you know, that is. Exa that's exactly what that is. You know, Susan, I didn't know what that was until my mother was here. My mother, my mother's still alive. She's 97 years old, lives in Detroit, but she hasn't been here in about 10 years now. But uh, uh, long ago, uh, when she was here, inside of this little closet area, um, she noticed there was a little drain in the floor and the, and this door and that's the first thing she said she recognized that immediately she said well this was an ice this is an ice box this is where the guy would deliver the ice and this drain here would allow the melting ice water to, to drain away safely and um, so I'm, I'm surprised that you recognize um, that um, a lot of the old houses have that I, I love the way you have the original wood here yeah Instead of vinyl Oh no! You, it, it, when you look at the woodwork, it's just it's just incredible. It's just outstanding. All the detail, mm -hmm. and to, to cover that up with vinyl would just be a sin. And the problem with vinyl, when you do that, it's just so telltale because the detail is gone, and it it, it just looks so so different. Mm -hmm. You could never capture this look with uh, with a, a vinyl uh, exterior or aluminum or any other modern coating. Mm -hmm. The curved wood, uh, you just don't and see that anymore. It's all original wood. When we moved in, uh, part of the extensive hours that we've done, of course, this this porch and even this whole wall um, was all stripped of beer wood. There were 25 coats of paint on it. It was just horrible. And you can't paint over that and have it look good. And 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 not to have it repeal and look terrible. Mm. So the first thing I did when I moved in was to spend five years on the outside stripping everything down and, and repainting it and um, sealing, caulking, reputtied all the windows. I went through gallons of putty. Even had to take the windows out on the front of the house um, and take the sash apart and re-glue them because they were coming apart. Take the glass out, take the putty out, take the window apart, re-glue it, put the, put, the, put the glass back, put the window. They it, make replacement just, windows, you know. But it doesn't match. Oh, okay. Right? <laughs> and so everything has been just taken back to the way it was years ago, and it's back in great shape again. The uh, brickwork looks like a Flemish bond. Do you think it is or an English bond? It's not just straight. It's uh, not just straight. Well, it, it's unique in this regard. You're right. It's not uh, what you're probably referring to as running bond. Running bond is a standard way that brick is laid. But this, you have the small half bricks every two feet. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is, is because most bricks are what what would you would call a veneer brick. In other words, it's real brick, but it's not solid brick. This house is a true brick house because the walls are are probably about 15 inches thick. Mm -hmm. But it's one layer of brick, and then there's an inch air space, another full layer of brick, an inch air space, another full layer of brick inch air space and then and then furring strips with wet plaster so when you look at those these let me point this out these these small square bricks here are 15 inches long and they go through all three layers of brick to tie the three brick walls together okay that is a strong and, bond and so that yeah but that gives you a different look because you have those half bricks every two feet, and that locks it together. So you'll see on the inside of the house, the window sills are all um, quite quite large because the brick wall is so thick. Right? Mm -hmm. 
would you say it helps keep it warm in the winter? Oh, tremendous difference. If it were solid brick, masonry would just conduct the heat out um, like a duct. Uh -huh. And and the, the four air spaces that are in there um, makes a tremendous difference in the heat loss. Uh -huh. And so you wouldn't think it's as bad, you know, it's as costly to heat as, as um, some of these other houses. It's not bad at all. How many rooms? Uh, 26. That, that includes the bathrooms. There's uh, seven bathrooms and uh, 11 bedrooms. 4,000 uh, square feet? 5,000? Uh, no, 7,500. Wow. Yeah, 7,450, 75. It's right in that range. Yeah. yeah. Does it depend? Do you use the cellar or you don't count that? I, that's not part of the count. No. Uh -huh. I do use it. That's where my wood shop oh, is. Oh, well, we'll have to take a look at that. Um, but the, the first three floors is, is uh, 7,500. Most of the homes in here, other than the, the large one up at the end, are in the range of 7,500 square feet. Uh -huh. okay. The one next door here is probably about 8,000. Um, but they're similarly sized. Mm -hmm. All the unique designs, but they're close, to, close you were, to the same. You were mentioning unique designs, some stucco. Some yeah, there's a dozen homes up here, and that's what makes them all unique is, is uh, there's a couple, three that are stucco. There's two brick. Um, homes. Um, there's uh, clapboard sided homes next door. Um, Vivian Ferguson's is, uh, is a cedar shake uh, or a cedar sided. Uh, so each one has their own. Their, every house is totally unique in its design um, and in the way uh, the um, the outward appearance of it being brick or stuck over wood mm. siding or clapboard or whatever. Or spires. Or spires. <laughs> So this would have actually been the back of the house. Yes, yes. The, the original um, driveways that, that went through um, all of the area around here are mostly overgrown. Matter of fact, we're walking on a driveway right now, which is now back to lawn. Um, the driveways and the great lawn have all long ago overgrown. Mm -hmm. um, so the um, the only entrance now is is coming through uh, from Forest Street in the back of the house. Oh, you can't and, make use of the yeah. Now the driveway right here, Susan, used to go just to the left of that fence, and then down to the front. Oh. And and right right in front of us, the brick walk here went out to the driveway. Uh, that was gone when we moved in. I, I <clears throat> there's you can just see the end of it. But the driveways went down across the front. All the way down into the into the great lawn, and even next door here to Vivian's house, um, again that you can't see it because it's overgrown. But the um, uh, the driveway swung up, went around a circular drive around that tree, and then back out again. Mm -hmm. And now over the years, it's just um, just overgrown. Mm -hmm. It's just because they were dirt drives, gravel drives, so they were never taken out. They're just grown over now with with lawn. Mm -hmm. Well, they say how those are better for the environment anyway, not to pave them, but... Not to pave them, right. <laughs> not yeah. a Never permeable drive. Uh -huh. sure. Sure. You know, it looks even bigger from this side. Well, it is. It's, it's, it's quite high when you're up there working on a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had to do a lot of... Um, the house had uh, vines on it years ago, you know, when the Chinese were living here in um, Ivy. And the ivy just really does a lot of damage to the brick, to, to the um, uh, to the mortar joints. So you don't recommend and, the quaint look of ivy. Well, if you want to pay the price, <laughs> because we had to um, just chip it all out and and um, and repoint just so much of the of the brickwork. But it's at least now back to where it's been trouble free for a lot of years. How come this brick? Are well, writing Merlin? Yeah, you know, I didn't do that. I, the way I understand it, that there was a, a small wood porch that uh, that came out over that over the side door opening, uh -huh. and it broke down, rotted down, sometime years ago. And someone um, put the brick in there to replace where the wood went into the brick. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, there's a few telltale lines of paint on the brick where the yeah. where the porch was oh. and i've never seen a picture of what it looked like if there was a railing on it or what i, I don't know we'll have to take a look down on the historical i'm noticing those gables uh, look like clappers not uh, brick wood oh no yeah those that, those are cedar cedar um cedar siding yeah i replaced all that 
uh, uh, ripped them all off 25 years ago and, and uh, put all new cedar up. Mm. And all the original gutters are still up. They're all wood. No kidding. They're copper lined wood. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. The house must have cost a fortune to build way back when. Oh, I can't imagine. My goodness. There's so much detail. It's hard to imagine um, what a place like this would cost to build. Millions. Oh, probably, for sure. It would definitely be in the millions. Now, do you no. think this was original? This, uh, oh, I don't yeah. even know what you call it. Kind yeah. of like terrace. Yeah, there's two thing. terraces on the front, and they definitely are, are original. Um, the only, uh, they had crumbled over the years, um, and I took, I disassembled them and, and uh, re-bricked all of it. Um, there, someone, before we had moved in, had raised uh, the dirt in the front about six, four or five inches, because the porch area used to step down onto the lawn, uh -huh. um, just like the house next door. And so since it, someone had already filled all the dirt in there, when I took this apart to rebuild it, I just added two more layers of brick and raised it up so it would at least all be level. Mm. So if I were coming to visit, coming to a party back in 1901, I would come to this door. Yes, yeah. It, 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 the side door, uh, the, that's where the chauffeur dropped you off for through the front here, but the driveway used to go down where those trees were, right oh. across the front. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the main entrance would be e either here in the front or this, the side entrance, which is still a real beautiful entrance way. Uh -huh. Probably depending on whether it was raining or not, uh -huh. whether you take the long walk or the short walk. Uh -huh. And there's another interesting thing, is that tree. There's a picture in one of the old um, um, historic Manchester historical books of a photograph that was taken around 1901 or two or three. Um, with that tree in the picture. It's that tree? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And um, the tree was probably half the size it is now, but clearly the same tree, same shape, same everything. Uh -huh. But the photograph was taken against the house, and none of these trees here uh, were up. You, know, you couldn't see a tree in sight. So that says that 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 tree must be just a 200 years old at the rate that it's. That picture was taken 100 years ago, and it and it's only twice as big. Hmm. Well, should huh. we go in the side door or the front door? Yeah, we can go in the front. Okay. Matter of fact, it might be, uh, you might have to go back and on the back. Mm -hmm. This was all rebuilt as well. You mean even the porch was falling down? Yeah, this, this section across here, there are two two by twelves in between there, and the gutter, there's a built in gutter right above there, and it had leaked for years, and it rotted the whole top of that pillar oh. and the square, and ants got in there. Oh. And um, so I took all the pillars out, jacked the porch up, disassembled the whole front of the porch, replaced all of the two by twelves inside, had to remake the, uh, the top of the pillars with the round part, which has been replaced, and the square parts. Um, you, you did that in your lady? Yes, oh. definitely all that. I made that to match this one. Uh -huh. This is original, that's a replacement. I can't tell the difference. And, uh, and the, well, and the same with the inside. The inside moldings were all rotted. Um, I made all those to match. And all the moldings on the bottom of the pillar against the brick was all rotted. That's all been replaced on both sides. Um, Jerry, I don't want to get personal, but you must have spent a fortune, not just in your time, but in money. Well, most of it's labor. <laughs> I mean, things like that, if you had to buy them or to pay somebody to do it, you're right, it would, it would just be prohibitive, but um, that's kind of a fun thing to do. Um, and you only do it once, and then you get the satisfaction of saying, wow, that looks good, and <laughs> brings it back the way it looked originally, and, and so as long as you do a little proper maintenance, it'll last forever. So all you're referring to like oil-based paint and that sort of thing? To keep oh yeah, this is all oil-based paint. I never use water based on the outside. The problem with water base is that, is that <clears throat> it's rubbery, and if there is a leak anywhere where water gets behind it, the paint doesn't peel away. It just lifts off the surface, water stays in there, and the wood rots. Oil-based paint, if you got a leak, will crack because it's hard, and it will peel away, and the wood will dry out, so you don't get rot. Plus it notifies you then. It, it's telling you it, paint. exactly, exactly. So everything on the outside is, uh, is oil. 
Inside, I can use water, but only on the walls, not uh -huh. on the woodwork. Yeah, your bird sanctuary too. Huh? Turkey vultures. Yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. Hope they're not looking it up. No, no. They only eat. This is a beautiful yeah. view of those windows, uh, the gable windows. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Now, did your kids grow up here, or they? Grow yeah. No, they. Well, they, they were um, nine. 9, 11, and 12, or 8, 9, and 10, around there uh, when we moved in. Um, of course, now they're all going to be gone. There's three boys. Uh, what did they think they, of moving into such a big place? Well, I know my middle son, when he first moved in, because of all the ivy that was in the back, he was um, needed a nightlight because, <laughs> you know, the, the, the moonlight or, or outside light would, um, and the ivy would um, make. <laughs> Uh, waves on the wall and <laughs> a little scary for a while, <clears throat> but that was the only problem. No, I think they loved it. They it was a it was a great place, big uh -huh. house to play in. Uh -huh. and, uh, Did they invite their friends over? Oh, all the time, all the time. They 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 had a set up on the third floor that way they could all play up there and you never knew that they were around. Uh -huh. Out of sight, out of mind. Ah, uh -huh. yeah. Now you said you also had visits from Emily. Cheney Neville and Mary. Very Hart Cheney. Cheney. Yeah. yeah. Mary Hart uh, Cheney was the last. She's she's been here. Uh, she's come by every year until about five years ago, because now I think she's well into her nineties. And um, and Emily first came. Oh, in the seventies. Um, and Kimberly Cheney. He was an older uh, brother. He came in nineteen seventy eight. And it was the first time he had been here in 40 some odd years. And he gave me a lot of history of the house, uh -huh. inside and out. Um, Emily and Mary Hartshine were the two, two youngest out of 10 or 12 kids that they had. And, um, and so Emily came back, oh boy, she'd been here at least six, seven, eight times. And, uh, and Mary has been here more than that. Uh, she would come annually uh, when she came to visit family and friends, because she lived in California, or still does. And we still get a Christmas card from them, and, and they've given us some old photographs um, of, of um, them growing up in the house. They must have been thrilled that you were taking the initiative to fix the place up. Yeah, I think so. I, you know, it's been every time that they would come, and, and I, of course, their nie nieces and nephews have, have come um, over the years and, and seen the house, and they've always been um, very appreciative of the fact that that them having grown up here and enjoyed it in their memories and then saw the house in such severe disrepair for so many years mm -hmm. and then finally you know in the last 25 years 30 years to see the, the house brought back to life um, and restored back the way it was when they remembered it in the 1920s and 1930s mm -hmm. a long time ago yeah. and what is this so. the front door then or this is the front door well, there's there's seven doors <laughs> outside door to the house we can just take a quick walk on the back there okay and uh, make a complete circle watch your step Have a little See. vegetable garden over there? No, no, it's just peonies. peonies. It's interesting, you know, those, those hemlock trees we were talking about before, um, th this was just 